In 2016, Mothman historians set out on a quest to prove the existence of West Virginia. Some researchers claim that West Virginia is the 35th state of the U.S., which mysteriously came into existence on June 20th, 1863, manifesting forth from some mystical ether, though no scientific evidence has ever been brought forward to prove its existence. But some witnesses claim to have actually been to West Virginia. West Virginia is supposedly home of strange monsters like the Flatwoods Monster or Gray Barker, amazing beings like the Mothman or Mary Heyer, and has seen incredible visitors like Indrid Cold or John Keel. Some theorists speculate that West Virginia is an unknown spectrum of energy which surrounds us at all times, perhaps interdimensional, related to electromagnetism, or even to quantum physics. But could West Virginia really exist? Science still searches for answers. And now, the continued adventures of Mothman Historian. In October of 2018, I went to the Whipple Company store in Fayette County, West Virginia. The now historical building was built circa 1890, operated as a company store until 1957, and continued as a retailer until 1980. It now serves as a museum offering coal mining history tours, and since 1991 has been officially recognized as a historical place. Many people in West Virginia, including myself, grew up in old mining communities or coal camps along the creeks. Back in the old days, these kind of places were much more lively, when coal mining was a thriving business, and the center of it all was always the company store. Coal miners lived in houses provided by the coal mining companies, who set up these camps within mountainous valleys, often by railroads. Nowadays, these coal camps are shells of their former selves, and I can attest that many of the old company houses are prone to burning down due to bad electrical wiring. The coal miners were often paid in script, a type of currency about the consistency of a metal washer that can only be used at the company store. Those who live in these regions are sure to find some if they dig in their backyard. This is how the miners would have gotten paid. You know, this was their tags that they would put on the end of their coal cars. The company store was the one-stop shop for everything in these small communities. In the case of the Whipple Company store, the same is true. Taking the tour of the place, I got to see tons of historical items and photos. The building had a very unique architecture. The foundation block of the whole building was in the center of the main circular room behind the counter. As it was explained to me, this made the acoustics very loud for anyone who stood there. And because of this, the man behind the counter couldn't speak, but could hear everything going on in the store. There was a rope elevator. A working cash register. Okay, press down this. Press that one. Okay. Turn the handle all the way around. Keep turning. Keep turning until... There you go. And the upstairs was a ballroom. The upstairs section had a lot of windows, because the wife of the company store owner, Lucy Dent Collins, liked to look out of them and keep an eye on the neighborhood. There were many disputes around the old company store in its day. 
because of the conflict between the mining companies and the workers' unions who fought for better treatment. The union miners wore red bandanas, the origin of the derogatory phrase redneck. Several deaths can be found in the building's history having to do with these fights. One interesting tidbit I learned was about churches with snake handlers. Apparently, snake handling is illegal in other states, yet permitted in West Virginia as a religious practice. The Whipple Company store is also supposedly haunted. Some paranormal TV shows have apparently been there as well. I kept this in mind when I went there and walked around with an EMF meter after the tour. It went off pretty consistently the entire time, so I conclude that it was probably just the electrical wiring. The tour guide had written two books about the store, its history, local memories, ghost stories, and folklore associated with the place. Superstition seems to be a common part of Appalachian life, or at least it is in my experience, and for me growing up. It's not Norse mythology, not Greek mythology, but Creek mythology. You take a number two pencil, it's never been sharpened, you put a needle through the end of it and thread it with thread, of course, or you can do it with a wedding ring, and you put it over your belly button, it swings round and round, it's a girl, and it swings back and forth, it's a boy, and Wait. it's always been accurate, every yeah. time I've used it. Yep, yeah, I've witnessed this. Do they, the rest of the family, do they do that? Mm, I don't think so. Okay, so they all do that for um, testing pregnancy things? See yeah. the, Hmm. Um, how does the, the pencil test work in terms of how does it know the answer? I don't know how it knows the answer. Just round and round for a girl and back and forth for a boy. Okay. You never questioned how it was able to do that? No, I never questioned. I never thought twice about it. I just thought it was neat. Okay. So do you think it was the, the pencil that was doing it? Like the, the pencil itself? Or no, I didn't. Didn't think about how it works. No, I never thought about how it just works. Just works. Just works. Okay. Um, it was never implied that someone was moving it, was it, when you were growing up? No. Okay. So it's just like a neat little trick that if you hold up a pencil or a, a wedding ring, that it'll do that. Yeah. Okay. 
the original idea would be that something's moving it and that something's telling you the answer. But because it got like passed down through the family, you secularize divination to just a pencil trick. Yeah. It's interesting. It was the pencil test. I didn't question it either. I'm like, yeah, neat that that can do that. But when you think about it, Make what what yeah. would be there to make that move? Like a pencil doesn't have any kind of mechanism to move that way unless it's detecting in some way the, the baby in the belly. Yep. So it would have to be some kind of intelligence moving it. If it wasn't that, it would be your hand, I guess, moving it. Yeah, if it wasn't an intelligence moving it, it would have to be the unconscious muscle movement in your hand moving it. But the accuracy is um, impressive. If it, like if it is your hands moving it and it's making it sway, then it's interesting that um, I've seen it work and get the right answer. It doesn't matter who's holding the, the thread on the needle. Yeah. So it could be perhaps that the person holding it, you know, is being around the pregnant person is able to guess or able to know what the, the gender of the baby is and then, you know, subconsciously moves it in that direction. sightings around here near this fishing pier and there have also been 
sightings near a trail and near an exit where she's been seen in the road. So I'm down here to see if there is anything to this legend. Uh, the woman in white story is a story that I've also heard before in these communities around here, but this one is recent. There's been like recent sightings, so that's why we're down here now. And also they say that this lady is supposed to be seen around uh, October and November. So I had to come down here before November is over. Okay, recording. If there's anyone or anything here, could you please speak in this device? There is anyone or anything here? Is there a lady in white here? It's been seen here in the white grass. When you record and then you do an immediate playback, a live EVP, that's what that's called. That way you can sort of have a conversation. If you were to hear something here, you could respond back to what they said if you heard something as opposed to waiting and listening to it later. Are you looking for something or someone? Are you lost? Do you need any kind of help? Is there anything you want me to do? Any way I can help you? Are you lost? Do you need any water is associated with paranormal activity a lot of times, so maybe moving closer to the water will help. Is there anyone here? Are you looking for something or someone? Are you lost? Is there a woman in white? A lady who's wearing a white dress? Does the water help you in any way? Do you like the creek, the water? If so, could you say something? Or if you have anything to say at all, please speak in this recorder. I hope they'll be able to hear it. Have people seen you around here? Yeah, that's a lot of background noise, but even through the background noise, I didn't hear anything, any voices or any anomalous sounds. Okay, so I'm here on the track now. There's a little track here. And we're gonna do another EVP recording. It's very cold out here, my hands are numb, but I'm not here to see if I can find the lady in white, if I can hear anything on this recorder. So, I'm gonna try this one more time. If the lady in the white dress is here, is there a reason that you're seen in November? Is there a reason that you're seeing the fall? Is there something about this time that we should know about? Could you tell me where you're from? Has anyone encountered you up here? Anyone seen you? And if you've been here, can you tell me why you were here? If there's anything you need, if there's any way I can help you, can you please tell me now so I can hear you? Okay, nothing on that one. Sometimes on here it kind of sounds like there's something very, very quiet underneath of it and it sounds like it could be whispering or mumbling. But if you listen closely, it is those trucks going by. So that's the only thing I hear. We're going to try some other techniques now, some other methods of communication, and see if we can get any results with those. It wasn't just our family, it's like all the families in like little coal towns or old coal towns, coal camps. Um, they always talk about the woman in the white veil. And um, even my friend Chad like grew up and he swears that he saw a woman in a white veil in his grandma's house. But it's just like supposed to be this woman who lurks in coal camps and she's dressed in a white dress and she's got a white veil. And when she looks at you, you just kind of like freeze and you get this overwhelming filled dread. And then things go back to normal. She just disappears. It's when your adrenaline spiked out the roof. Yeah. <laughs> If there is anyone or anything here, could you please walk up and touch this device like this? If you get anywhere near this device here, it will light up and it will let us know that you're here. So can you please give me a sign of your presence? Walk up and touch this device. I'm willing to have a conversation with you and to hear out anything you have to say. So if you could, join me in a conversation, communicate with me, sit down there. I would stay here, but it is very cold. Ooh, it is cold. Okay, this bench here is the end of the trail. You can see how tall these trees go up, how tall the mountain is up there. 
But this is a trail where she's been most frequently seen these past few months, September, October, November. She's said to be seen most frequently in November. Right now is November 27th. If there was gonna be a good time where she would be seen, it would be in this location this time of year. I haven't seen anything. I guess it'd be kind of hard to see something white when it's covered in snow everywhere. You know, the people who are saying they've seen it, it's not like a subtle thing. They're see yeah, I'm sure that if we were to come across her, we'd notice. If you could, could you manifest some energy here? Any kind of electromagnetic energy, spiritual energy, any kind of energy you have, could you manifest this here? It will light up and let me know that you're here. I'm here on the path where the woman in white is most frequently sighted. I'm here at the time in which she appears most often, according to the stories. So could you please make this light up? And make this light up. Could you please? I came all the way here for a conversation or a sign of your presence. If there is someone here, the woman of white is here, or anyone else, if you could please, could you show me that you're here? I've got one more thing to try. I came a long ways, in some cold weather, to have a conversation. If anyone here wants to have a conversation, wants to say anything, could you please say it into this radio? This radio is sweeping through stations. If you know how to communicate through this radio, could you please do so now? Is there anything you want to say? Any message you want to convey at all? Any kind of communication? I'm looking for a conversation from the material to the immaterial. I'm willing to listen. Is there anything you have to say to me or anyone else? Okay. Is there a reason that you're seen here in the fall? Are you looking for someone or something? Do you need help? Is there something important about this location? Is there something important or special about this time of year? Maybe Halloween, Samhain, the changing of the seasons. Is there something important about the changing of the seasons from fall to winter? Okay. I think I heard some noises, but those might just be a stream. Sound like breaking leaves. Are you what they would call a banshee in Celtic folklore? Do you know anything about Celtic tradition? Anything about Ireland or Celtic tradition? Why do you wear white? Are you in mourning? Are you wearing white in mourning? If you have anything to say for this radio, anything at all you want to communicate, last opportunity before I turn the radio off. I'm willing to listen to anything you have to say. Okay, these have not gone off. If you want to, you can still walk up and touch this. And I'll light up and we'll know you're here. Turn the radio off now. In three, two, one. Goodbye. Okay. Is there a woman in white here? A woman in a white dress? If so, speak aloud now and I'll be able to hear you. Why do you wear white? Are you wearing white in mourning? Did you lose someone? Anything you want to say, say aloud. Is there a reason you've been seen here in this location, in this time of year? 
Is there something you're trying to tell us? Something you want, you want us to know? Is there something important or special about this location? Is there something important or special about this time of year? Is it because of Halloween? All Saints Day? All Hallows Eve? Samhain? The changing of the seasons? Is it because of the changing of the seasons from fall to winter? I'm here for a conversation from the material to the immaterial. Do you have anything to say? Where are you from? If you are here, why are you here? Any kind of information, could you please state now? I'm here for a conversation from the material to the immaterial. Okay, so I have a flashlight here and the camera person is holding a card with Morse code on it for the word hello. So Morse code is a series of dots and dashes. Dot. I'm going to flash dot. hello with this flashlight. Dot. 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 Dash. Four dots for H, dot. one dot for E, dot, dash, dot, dot, dot for L, and then dash, dash, dash for dot. O. We'll try it one more time. This is difficult to do. Okay. Dash. See anything? Did you get that message? I said hello. Okay, so that's the thing. These didn't go off at all. I would have heard this. Okay, we're leaving now from this area. We're going back to the fishing pier. So, is there anything else you want to say? Say it now. The CMF meter keeps going off. There is power lines here. Oh, it's right here. Is it the is it the street lamp? Is anyone here? If you're here, make this light up. Make this light up all the way to red. You're here. Manifest some energy here. I never thought about it, but there is not only two. Whoa. Whoa, I thought I heard like a dog or an animal walking up behind me. Okay, that was probably leaves and stuff blowing in the wind that made that noise, but it sounded like an animal or a dog, like that was crazy. There are power lines here. I didn't think about it, but there's not only kinetic energy from the creek, but there's also all these power lines. So these power lines could be part of the paranormal activity if that is such a thing. Okay, is anyone here? It's freezing cold. We're about to leave. Is there anyone here? Is there a woman in white? A lady in a white dress? I notice that there's a lot of power lines up here. Do the power lines help you? If there's someone or anyone here, can you please speak through this radio? This radio is scanning channels, scanning frequencies. If you know how, can you manifest something on this radio? Say something on this radio. Okay, so this is it. This is the grave. Homer Smith, born 1914, died 1966.
This is the spot where on November 12th, 1966, Kenneth Duncan and four other men were digging a grave. They claimed to have seen a brown humanoid creature fly up from some nearby trees and glide low over their heads. So this would be one of the earliest chronological Mothman sightings, reported only after the Scarberry Mallet sighting. So that's the gate there. So it's a straight walk here. Imagine if you will, one Kenneth Duncan. He and four other men were digging a grave for his father-in-law, Homer Smith, in a cemetery near Clinton, West Virginia. But little did they know, they weren't actually here in Reamer Hill Cemetery. They were actually in the Twilight Zone. So since this is a sighting location, I'm just checking to see if there's any electromagnetic fields. And it doesn't appear to be. There's nothing out here that would make that naturally. So there should be no reason for this to go off. Okay, no EMF detected. I'll keep using this around the area and see if there's anything there. Doesn't appear to be. So yeah, if Kenneth Duncan's sighting holds true, then this is a Mothman sighting location. And the Mothman was flying overhead right here in this location, right here in this spot. It's a very unique Mothman sighting location. It's a cemetery, it's not in Point Pleasant, it's not the TNT area. You know, a different kind of Mothman sighting location. So not many people would recognize this spot as a place where the Mothman was sighted. I had to look up Homer Smith and sort of look for any listings of a grave matching that name. The first one I found near Clendenin was Kunt Cemetery, but that Homer Smith died in 1964, so that couldn't have been him. The only other Homer Smith grave near Clendenin was this one. So I would say, since it says 1966, and it's the only Homer Smith listed at a grave site near Clendenin, that this must be the cemetery where the sighting is said to have taken place. When I arrived at the graveyard and I was looking for the stone that I saw at the corner of my eye and you know thought it was a person standing there and it ended up being the headstone location. Some of the other men who were digging the grave alongside Kenneth Duncan, they didn't see the creature, but their names were Andrew Godby, uh, Bill Poole, Bob Lovejoy, and Emil Gibson. Maybe mentioning those names will incite some kind of activity. Kenneth Duncan, Homer Smith, Bob Lovejoy, Bill Poole, Andrew Godby, Emil Gibson. A lot of people who are interested in the paranormal say that intention is a part of it. You know, that the mind plays a role in paranormal manifestations. So your intention and your mindset is supposed to be able to influence any kind of experience. So if that is true, then the fact that I'm here to see a Mothman location, maybe that will incite some activity. That is, of course, part of it. Mostly, I just wanted to see the, the site, see what it looks like, hopefully gain some insight on if this is at all possible, what the location and the landscape look like. No more information about this place that's part of this legend. And maybe this place would be more frightening at nighttime. Cemeteries often are. But when they were digging the grave, I assumed that it was daytime. So these are about the right conditions. This sighting would have taken place before the Scarberry Mallets were chased by the Mothman and their 57 Chevy. A few days before the Scarberry Mallet sighting. The Mothman would have been here, far from home, away from Point Pleasant, here in Clendenin. Kenneth Duncan 
would have had this experience and then sort of just tucked it away and not thought about it or not told anyone about it until the Scarberry Mallets made their sighting public. Until he read the newspaper, saw the Scarberry Mallets talking about a winged creature. Can you imagine reading a local paper, reading about somebody else being chased by a flying creature and thinking to yourself, is that what I saw? You know, he saw something here, didn't know what it was, didn't know what to do about it, kept it to himself. Could you imagine seeing a flying creature fly overhead? What would you think about it? What could you do about it? And then to know that other people were seeing it too. You have to wonder if what he saw was related to what went on in Point Pleasant. Maybe you see a large bird, maybe you're mistaken in what you've seen, maybe you for a quick second you think you saw something fly overhead and then someone else reports something strange and it colors your perspective. You saw an amorphous something and then once other people start giving their details that amorphous something comes to fit an archetype, an already established thing perhaps. Or perhaps he was thinking of flying creatures, or perhaps large bird, hallucination. You could have those sort of things. I am noticing this place is very high up. There are a lot of hills and perching places. And if you haven't noticed, there's been some crows in the background and some, some bird noises. And there have been a lot of birds taking off, flying. You know, they're not large enough to be noticeable, and I don't think they're large enough to be mistaken for a flying man. So this is Mothman Historian, standing in a Mothman location. One of the earliest Mothman sightings, chronologically, only reported after the Scarberry Mount sighting. The sighting place of Mothman witness Kenneth Duncan. Many horror movies, where do they begin? They often begin in a foggy cemetery. It makes sense in a way. This would be sort of the opening to the Mothman story, partially. Of course, there's November 1st sighting in Point Pleasant. The National Guardsman saw a brown humanoid creature perched in a tree. A lot of people forget about that because it's not as detailed a story and we don't know that person's name. So technically, it does begin in Point Pleasant. It begins with the National Guardsman. Then it comes over here to Clendenin and then it goes back to the TNT area. But the story, it seems like a, a good opening, really to be here in a cemetery, the perfect horror movie opening. Right now we're gonna record an EVP with all my intention, my reason for being here. Wearing a Mothman fan club shirt. No ambiguity of why I'm here. So if there is a presence here, they should be able to see immediately why I'm here. Do you have anything to say about this location? Do you know anything about Mothman sightings? Anything about the Mothman? Do you know anything about John Keel? The year of the Garuda, 1966 and 1967. Do you have any information or knowledge about flying creatures? Any information on the Garuda? Winged humanoids? Anything at all about monsters? Chimera? Do you have anything to say about wings? About birds? About death? Any information we greatly appreciate it. Seeking communication from the material to the immaterial. I am here because this is the location of a Mothman sighting. Okay, I think I heard a whistle over there, but there are a lot of bird noises. I'm here because this is a Mothman sighting location. I came here specifically for that reason. What do you think about that? I came here on the off chance that maybe I could see the Mothman. What do you think about that? Can you do something? Give me a sign of your presence. Can you say something in this recorder? Anyone or anything that wants to can speak into this recorder and it will record your voice. Do you have anything to say? I'm about to leave. Is there anything you have to say? Any parting words? I want to have a paranormal experience, a paranormal encounter. I want to see a monster, a UFO, spirits. Do you have anything to say about that? Is there anything you can do about that? Do you have anything to say or any information for someone seeking the paranormal? 
Should people investigate the paranormal? Should people come here? If so, why? Do you have anything to say about humanity? Anything to say to human beings? Did Kenneth Duncan really see a flying creature here? If so, why? What does it mean? What were you trying to say? I can't stay here forever, so I must go now. Is there anything you want to say before I leave? Anything I should do before I leave? Okay, I am turning off the recorder now. In three, two, one. Okay. Thank you to anyone who tried to speak or anyone that came through. It's time to go now. Okay. No EMF. And I'll have to check the audio recorder later to see if there's any voices. But now it's time to go. If there was a Mothman sighting right there, that would then make this a paranormal place. I haven't had anything unexplained happen in my time here. No EMF spikes or anything like that. But this was just a quick trip to make sure this is the right headstone, this is the right place, and to kind of see what this place looked like. Another sighting location that I've been to, another Mothman spot to check off the list. You know, most Mothman sightings happened in the TNT area or somewhere around Point Pleasant, like random roads and things. This is the only one that's really has a unique spot to it. It's a graveyard, it's in Clendenin, it's away from Point Pleasant. So one of the, the few unique Mothman places. There used to be a old company house that sat here. Hmm. And of course it burned down. But when it was there at night there was a man, like a like a shadow. I couldn't see the man's face. It would always come to my doorway and just stand there and I would see it. And I got so mad at it because it would always show up and it would not come any farther past my doorway. So one night I said, what do you want? And it was gone. And it was gone for a while. And then it finally came back and we were laying in the bed that night and I told my boyfriend that the shadow was there. It wasn't, wouldn't really call it a shadow because it was more defined. It was, you could make it out. It wasn't just a shadow. You could see the clothes, which was black clothes. But anyways, I told him, I said, he's getting ready to sit on the bed. And my boyfriend at the time said he could feel someone sit down on the bed and they sat on his feet. And then he believed me because he never believed me before that. But then after he said he felt someone sit on his feet, then he started believing me. And then after the house burned down, I still see things in here like there's a there's a kid that I see there's a a black shadow and I know that it's a shadow it's it's just black big tall slender black shadow I seen a woman couldn't really see her face I seen her body and her hair where I seen a woman going from the living room into my bedroom was it within the last few years yeah, it was this year. Oh yeah, when the house was there, there was a big bright orb or something. Some kind of light, like a light, a ball of light that when you were laying in the bed, in the middle of the bed, the light just shot through the house and just circled over you and hovered there for a little bit and then just shot back out of the room and was gone. The swirling orb thing. How, how old was I there? You was probably three. Okay. Well, what color was the this light you said? It was just a big, bright ball of light. Hmm. It wasn't like it was like white light or yellow light or. Yeah, it was like white. Hmm. Okay. Was I asleep at the time? Hmm. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, and it just went around me. Yeah, it just hovered around your head for a little bit. 
and it was gone. With the the ball of light, was that in the current home or the one that burned down? The one that burned down, the old company house. Okay, is that the same with the, the person on the bed? Was that also the old house or the new one? That was the old house, but I was also told that there was a man that used to live in that house, and he worked on the turnpike, and he got ran over, and it killed him, and it messed him up so bad that when they had his funeral in that house, that they you couldn't see his face because his face was so mangled that they just had him in a black suit, and I'm wondering if that's the same man that was in the house because I could always see his body in his black suit but I could never see his face. Uh, where did you get the, that information from? A neighbor told me. Okay. So because we were telling the neighbor about the weird thing that had happened and that's when they told us about the, the man that lived here. Okay. So uh, the big tall shadow figure. Tell me about that one again. He's in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. By the refrigerator, he stands in the doorway, in between okay. the, the kitchen and the washroom. Okay, I've heard about that one before, and um, sometimes when I go in there to get a little snack or something, you can feel like something right there by the fridge, like something's looking at you, because the door frame's right there by the fridge, so when you open that up, you can sometimes feel like there's something staring at you, so that's kind of creepy. Any stories? Stories with me, the only one is one where I was too young to remember, right? Yeah. And then the thing in the kitchen. Uh, Not unless you want to include your imaginary friends you had. <laughs> okay, I want to talk about imaginary friends. Yeah, you had two imaginary friends. Uh-huh. Their names was Baco and Daisy. Mm-hmm, I remember them. And I was at the cemetery, and we were leaving, and just happened to go by a headstone, and the man's name was Baco. I remember that differently because I remember we thought it was and then we looked back and it said Bucko instead. No, it says Bucko. I'm pretty sure it's what I said. Okay, my sister remembers that story as well. But, you know. Okay, so you never read on, read up on the subject, investigated or that stuff? You've never been to any haunted locations that didn't, there weren't places that you lived? No. Okay. Your worldview on all this, any explanations, what you think this stuff's all about? No. I don't... I just think it's maybe spirits that that are here. I don't know what for what reason, but they're here for a reason. Okay. Any other opinion on these things? I think some people can see things when other people can't. When my grandma was born, she had a veil over her face, and the doctors told her she would see things that other people couldn't. Mm. You want to talk about like any uh, dreams that come true? I don't know, I have dreams and a lot of them come true, but it's not nothing major or yeah. sometimes just parts of them come true. And sometimes I have deja vus where I've done that before. Mm hmm I get that too. Okay, so you saw a light in the sky. Tell me about that one. Um, it was in Golly Bridge and we seen a bright light in the sky and we watched it for a little while. We thought it might have been a drone. We thought it might have been a drone. First we thought it was an airplane, but then it was too low to be an airplane. So then we thought it was a drone, so we pulled off the side of the road and it just sat there. And when I went to get the camera to take a picture of it, to bring home to show you, mm -hmm. it shot straight across the mountain. I mean, really fast. And then it was gone. Okay. And that, was that like near a, an old road or the main highway or what was that? It was, yeah, it was the main highway up that way. It was going up around Golly, Golly Mountain. Okay. Uh, you said it was, was it like one light or multiple lights? I want to say it was four lights, maybe. Three lights, somewhere around there. It was really bright. Like what color were the lights? They were just bright. In January of 2019, Season 1 of the video series Hellier was released by Planet Weird and found its way into my Twitter feed. The show featured many references to Mothman mythology and my favorite paranormal author, John Keel. Hellier was centered around Kentucky goblins like those from the 1955 case, another Appalachian high strangeness, 
which was something I was very familiar with considering where I live and the research that I focus on. What really intrigued me was a method they employed during their adventures, featuring a blindfold and noise-canceling headphones. I'd probably heard of something similar to it before, but it was the first time I'd seen that specific method. The technique is referred to as the Estes Method. It's derived from the Spirits of Stanley online miniseries. Immediately, I recognized that this idea was a much better way to use the scan radios, as opposed to just listening to them out loud as a group, or filtering them through pedal boxes. I got the equipment needed to try the method. Is there anyone here? Make yourself known if there is, if there is anyone here. Is this room haunted? Yes. Is there anyone here? Mm-hmm. Please communicate if there's anyone here. Go. Depress. One. Is there anyone here? Maybe. Maybe the black shadow. Are you here? The tall black you, shadow. You. Me. No. The orb. The bright orb that me, you, seen. Well, I seen. See? Any of the spirits that I see, are you here? This. There is. Is anyone here? Who's? Or is the little blonde hitter girl here that runs around my bed? Are you here? This is. Make yourself known if you're here, the little blonde haired girl. Five. Maybe the tall dark Here. Shadow. The tall dark shadow. Are you here? And why are you here? Are you here? Are you trying to tell me something? Virginia. Why do I see you in the kitchen a lot? Standing in the doorway. Going. What about the lady that I see? Are you here? Are you trying to tell me something? Go. 2A. Can you hear me? Is. As. Why don't you speak to me? I have. Tom. your name? Go on. What is your name? The tall black shadow, what is your name? Here. Tell you. Tell me your name. How old are you? Ghost. We are. Eight. You. Money. Communicate with us. You are. What about the woman? Are you here? The world. Tell me your name. Yes. 
Kamehameha Old War. Tell me what you want. Gray. Say goodbye or something, because I'm going to turn this off. Goodbye. Okay, I'm turning this off now. Can you answer any of my questions? Yes. What's two plus two? Four. Did you say four? Are there spirits in this room? You say? Three. Three. Okay. The rhythm. Is this house haunted? Is this place haunted? Yeah, me. Okay. Who are you? Suppose. Do you like this method? Finished. Does this work well for you? You said finished. Help. What do you need help with? Real quick. What do you need help real quick with? TBA? To be announced? Okay, do you need me to do anything? Today? Uh, not today, just any time. Do, do you need me to do anything? Gun? <laughs> uh, what, what do you mean by that? Um, does this method work well? Here? Yeah. Stop. Stop what? Do you want to finish this up? Is that what you're saying? You said finish and stop. Do you want to be done here? Is that what you're saying? Should I use this method? We don't. Is this a psychic phenomenon? Jay? Is this a psychic phenomenon? Me? Just? Is the paranormal a psychic phenomenon? Wait. Should I use this method on my trip? Time. Repeat. Is it time to use these on my trip, to use this method on my trip? Go out. The trip is March 10th. Should I take this on the trip? So is You it... know? Really? So... Wait. Is the Mothman real? You? Well, I'm the Mothman historian, so, yes. But is the Mothman real? At night? The Mothman's real at night. No. No? Okay, is the Mothman real? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Anything to say about injured cold? Good. He's good. Okay. Anything to say about John Keel? Say yeah. What do you have to say about John Keel? Over here. Is he over there? In beyond the veil? Flip them. Ow. Fly. Two more questions. Is my mother psychic? Is my mother, the person you're speaking to now, is she psychic? Allergic? Okay, one more question. Is the paranormal real? And if the paranormal is real, can you prove it to me? Time? 
Are you saying in time you'd be able to? Up. Time's up? Is that what you're saying? Is the paranormal real? And if so, can you prove it to me? Pretend? Is the paranormal real if you pretend that it is? Or is the paranormal... Yesterday? Are you saying the paranormal... Funny. Are you saying the paranormal is pretend? No, you are. <laughs> no, I'm pretend. Okay, then. Right. Right. I'm not pretending. Is the paranormal real? I want to know. Nowhere. Nowhere. Okay. Okay. Anything else to say before we end this off? People. What about people? Well, wait. We're going to turn this off now. Is there anything else to say? Wait. What is it? Dawn. Who's Dawn? Is it okay if we turn this off now? Me. Yeah, is it okay if I'm we sorry. Sorry for what? What's sorry for saying I'm pretend? Is it okay if we turn this off now? Okay. Point. Point what? Point pleasant? We gotta go now, so we gotta turn this off, okay? Okay, goodbye. That was cool. Uh, I heard tons of relevant answers. Like, it was a pretty good conversation, although there were certain parts where it was just like, it didn't match up, you know what I mean? There was two different people. One was a girl and one was a guy. Okay. Anything else about that? Um, his voice was more clear than hers. Hmm. Okay. Anything else? Any weird experience, experiences He had a there? deep voice. Okay. Every time he answered. Consistent voice. Hmm. Okay. And I could hear, like, music. Well, it's a radio. Like, your experience of using that, what do you think about it? Like, s s sitting there listening to the words as you scan through the stations. You have to really pay attention. Yeah, okay. Anything else about that? Do that, you think that method's cool? Yeah, it's cool. Okay. Yeah, I like that. One time it said, um, pretend. I was asking if the paranormal was real. And it said, pretend. I said, the paranormal pretend? And I said, no, you are. <laughs> and I said, I'm pretend? And you said, that's right. <laughs> and then at the end it said, I'm sorry. You remember that? Yeah. So yeah, it insulted me. And then it said, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's mad at you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and I kept asking if it thinks I should use this uh, for, the, um, for the trip, and I couldn't get any straight answer out of that. I asked if the Mothman is real, and it said, at night. Um, one thing it said, like, flip, flip them all over, and I think it's talking about tarot cards, and it said point, and I said point pleasant. I asked, well, do you have anything to say about injured cold? It said good, like, good that you know that, and it said, I asked if it had anything to say about John Keel, and they said, um, like, over here. So I'm like, like, he's over there. On the other side? Yeah, so I said, through the veil, didn't get an answer on that. And at one point, when I was almost done, it said, uh, time, and then, like, up, like, time's up. Mm. So that was pretty cool. Pretty good conversation, except for some random bits that don't fit, and it's sort of like sentence fragments you kind of have to work off of. The Estes Method is by far the best use of the scan radios. Never again should the audience be subjected to the static noise. A genius audio divination tool. It's a lot like transmediumship as done by psychics or spiritualists. One set diviner enters a trance-like state receiving messages while the crowd asks questions. Way better than the chaos of the whole group all interpreting it at once, and being influenced by the questions. When the questions and answers line up, it's both spooky and impressive. I've resolved to use this method going forward as my preferred use of the radios. My next trip was set for March 10th, 2019. 
in which I would be heading to Moundsville, West Virginia to a supposedly haunted school, a prisoner graveyard, and a Hindu temple. That's about all for now. I'll see you in time.